Who is the tenth man? The tenth man is the one man in ten in your community who needs or will need psychiatric help. Many of these men are silent men. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ralph Bellamy bringing to you The Silent Men. Our story concerns Laura Kennedy, a woman who journeyed into the land of the silent men on an errand of mercy. The mercy angle wasn't apparent at the beginning because, well, we're only human, and Laura never saw herself as the Florence Nightingale type. At first, she thought it was just one of those things you get roped into. No, Nancy, I I couldn't possibly join you. I'd never find the time. Now, it's only a few afternoons a week, Laura. Don't tell me you couldn't spare that. No, Nancy, I'm afraid I can't join you. Working in a mental hospital as a volunteer is not for me. What are you having for dessert? Oh, I'm not giving up so easily. And I'm not having any dessert. Oh, there, I've spoiled your luncheon for you. Oh, no, not at all, dear. I'm not sulking. I'm merely abstaining because I'm going to the hospital today and I'll be having tea with the patients. Oh, Nancy, do you expect me to believe that? You serve tea to those lunatics? Oh, don't use that old-fashioned word. And why shouldn't I serve tea to the mentally ill? Since when is it a disgrace to be sick? Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm just not interested in your volunteer unit. It's all right for you, but I, I'm squeamish about those... I mean, those mentally ill people. I wouldn't know what to say to them. Well, in this project I had planned for you, you wouldn't have to say anything. You mean I just sit and play the piano? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Dr. Carson said it could be very helpful. Oh, but even so, you must know lots of other people who could play the piano. Why pick on me? Well, there aren't many people around who can play as well as you. Oh, flattery won't get me. That's not flattery. It's a plain statement of fact. Besides, this work is so rewarding. Well... What exactly do you do? We help out the nurses and attendants by providing a little entertainment and recreation for the patients. Dr. Carson's very proud of us. Well, who is this Dr. Carson? One of the psychiatrists at the hospital. He supervises our unit. Oh. No beard, but he is charming and so good looking. <laughs> you can't get me that way either, Nancy. I've got a perfectly good husband. <laughs> no, don't count on me, dear. Oh, but Laura, how can I face Dr. Carson? Well, if he's as good looking as you say, that shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, don't be silly. I mean, he'll be so disappointed. Nancy Burton, what have you been up to? Look, Laura, I gave him your name as a volunteer. I said you'd start next Tuesday. Oh, Nancy, you shouldn't have. Yes, I guess I was too sure of you. But somehow I thought you would do it. There's such a wonderful challenge to the whole project. It's so satisfying to know that you're helping sick people get well. Well, if you've already given my name... Good girl, I knew you'd come around eventually. What a workout you've given me. <laughs> you know, I think I'll splurge just this once and have a chocolate eclair. I suppose Mrs. Burton has told you all about the work of the volunteers here at the hospital. Well, a little. She's done a great job. So have all the ladies. Now, about this project we had planned for you. Yes, I, I think I could stand a little preparation for it. Your job will be somewhat specialized, so you can begin at any time. But you will also get the regular training course for volunteers. But I, I still don't see how my piano playing can help the patients. You know the old saying, music hath charms. <laughs> Except that we're not dealing with savage breasts. We're treating sick minds. Minds that are unresponsive to words. Mm -hmm. Some of them are so withdrawn, so depressed, that we've not been able to make any sort of contact with them. Perhaps your music will reach them. We hope so, anyway. Well, I hope so, too, Dr. Carson. Would you like to go up to the ward now? Uh, yes, uh, I think so. Well, come this way, Mrs. Kennedy. All right. Mrs. Burton is waiting for us on the ward. 
Oh, uh, please don't discuss the patients in their presence. Oh, I won't. It's difficult to move these patients around, so we had to bring you and the piano to the ward. We'll go this way, to the day room, where we've assembled your audience. Day room? Yes, the big room at the end of this corridor. Oh. Chairs and tables and lots of windows looking out over the valley. Oh, the view must be lovely. Do the patients appreciate it? Some of them do. We hope that the rest of them will, someday soon. What's the matter? There they are. Yes, your patients. But they're just sitting there with their heads down, looking at nothing. It's hard to tell whether they're asleep or awake, alive or dead. I told you they were very depressed. Want to try the piano? All right. They don't seem to notice it. This is an experiment, Mrs. Kennedy. You mustn't expect miracles. At least, not this afternoon. Hello, Dr. Carson. Oh, Mrs. Burton. Hello, Nancy. Uh, you got any requests yet? Oh, give us time, dear. Well, I'll leave you ladies now. Oh, won't you be here for the music? Dr. Carson's a very busy man, Laura. Then we'll be alone here? Oh, no. You see that fellow seated with the patient, the one in the white coat? Mm -hmm. He's the attendant. And then there are two more down the hall. None of these patients has a violent history. If any one of them attempted any harm, it would probably be to himself. I see. Well, see you later. Goodbye. 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 Oh, Nancy, I hope I don't look scared, but I am scared silly. Nonsense. Sit down and play something. But what? Oh, I don't know. Something they all know and love. Uh, how about this? Any responses? Not yet. Give them time. I'll circulate a little. Any requests? Like the music, gentlemen? They don't like it, Laura, not so loud. They can't hear. They don't respond at all. Laura, can you play Dixie? Yes. Well, then play it. And smile for the customers. <laughs> There was no response to Laura Kennedy's rendition of the Chopin Nocturne. And they didn't seem to like Dixie either. There was no applause. And there were no requests. And so, Laura's afternoons at the hospital passed, one after another, all very much the same, until three weeks had gone by. By this time, Laura felt that she wasn't making any impression on the patients and had about decided to abandon the project. But one afternoon, when she was finishing Brahms' waltz... from one of the patients. Oh, look, Laura, it's the one in the blue sweater, Mr. Maxwell. He's applauding you. Do you think we ought to tell the doctor? Yes, I'll have the attendant call him. Meanwhile, you try and get Mr. Maxwell to talk. All right. Uh, did you like the music, Mr. Maxwell? Anything special you'd like to hear? Any favorites? I'll be glad to play anything if you'll only... Well, how are we doing? Any requests, Mr. Maxwell? It's no use, Nancy. He's gone back into his shell. Oh, you give up awfully easy, I must say. Dr. Carson's on the way now, so how about another try? Play Love's Old Sweet Song. All right, but this is the last one. See, there's no point to all this. You're not giving the experiment a chance, Laura. And what about Mr. Maxwell? That feeble applause, and after three weeks, they just sit there like bumps on a log. It's getting me down. Shh, they'll hear you. Hear me, I wish they could. Laura, control yourself. I certainly never thought you were the hysterical type. Oh, I 
I'm sorry, Nancy, but I was right. This is not for me. I'm not coming back anymore. Well, if that's the way you feel. <sighs> Looks like the concert's over. Oh, here's Dr. Carson. Well, I heard we've had a nibble. Anything else happen while I was coming up? No, I guess we spoke too soon, Dr. Carson. It was Mr. Maxwell who applauded, but he hasn't shown any other signs of interest. Well, let's see. Did you like the music, Mr. Maxwell? Did you like the music? Uh, oh, uh, yes, I, I like it fine. Good. You see, Mrs. Kennedy, Mr. Maxwell liked it fine. Oh, uh, Dr. Carson, may I speak to you for a moment? Well, let's step over here. Is he cured now, Dr. Carson? No, Mrs. Kennedy. Unfortunately, playing the piano will not cure mental illness. But we are very grateful to you. You see, what has gotten through to Maxwell is your attention and kindness in coming here to play for the patients. Oh. He sees that you want to do something to please him. And it's brought him into contact with us so that he can begin to tell us about his problems. I see. Well, Dr. Carson, I... Laura, Mr. Maxwell wants to speak with you. Come over here, will you? Coming. Well, I'm glad you like the music, Mr. Maxwell. I, uh... I wanted to tell you, uh, to tell you before. Oh, that's all right. Have you any requests? Any favorites? Oh, anything. The old songs? Well, I'll play them for you tomorrow. Uh, but, but, but you said you, you wouldn't come again. Oh, it doesn't matter what I said, Mr. Maxwell. It's what you said that counts. And you said you liked it fine. So, of course, I'll be here tomorrow. You have just heard The Silent Men, produced by the National Mental Health Foundation and presented through the cooperation of other organizations dedicated to the preservation of mental health. Ralph Bellamy acted as narrator. <laughs>